Hey, hello out there, uh, fellow YouTubers. It's uh, Archer Remark here, and I'm making uh, this video. It's a video response to Supreme's video where he was talking about uh, us as collectors and has Hasbro. Uh, are they sort of out of touch as to what we want and need as far as the action figures that we buy? And, you know, and it was also, like I said, just us as collectors in general. Uh, so he had some great points in that video. I'm sure there have been other video responses and regular responses as well. Uh, I know Daniel East 1000 did a video response and I, I watched that and um, he made some, brought up some great points as well. And you should definitely check out those two videos. Uh, so I just, I figured I would make all right, my video, I'll put my little two cents in, give you guys uh, my thoughts. Uh, and just first, you know, we have this great YouTube community, this great Star Wars YouTube community. And there's so many of us that, that do these Star Wars videos where it's hauls or reviews or whatnot. And it's not just the whole country, it's the whole world. Especially YouTube makes it so accessible, it's all over the place. Um... You know, you have people in, of course, America, but you have England, Germany, Australia, Finland, just so many other countries. I just, there's just a couple off the top of my head. And I think it's great also that we have so many uh, age ranges represented on YouTube. There are the younger kids, and then there are teens doing these, and people in their 20s, 30s, 40s. Uh... You have, in some cases, you have YouTubers who grew up with Star Wars and they have their own families and they have their own kids that are into Star Wars. And so, so you have this, uh, this thing that's just going to keep growing and growing and uh, sort of fluctuating and, you know, it's just, it's never going to go away and we don't want it to go away. But because of that, we have this every day or every year, there's always, there's, more people discovering Star Wars for the first time and discovering the action figures and becoming fans and all that. And so we have generation after generation. It's just going to continue growing up with these fantastic films and books and comics and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, that's... Uh, I'm going to be 37 soon, so I would I guess I fall into that sort of like first gen group of fans I grew up with the, the original films uh, but I collect uh, stuff from all six films the Clone Wars uh, the original you know vintage vintage stuff from the 70s and 80s so so I'm, I'm sort of all over the place but anyway but get, to get to the, the sort of main topic about Hasbro you know are they out of touch well some ways yes some ways no there's some things they do very well and some things they need some work on. So I got a couple points I'm going to try and go over here. Uh, one thing, like I said, there's there's many different age ranges. So you have the younger kids that actually are playing with their action figures and doing stuff and doing little battles in their room or whatever, and, and which is good because they're, heck, they're toys. They're meant to be played with, uh, especially w when you're still a kid. Uh, but... They're, they may be not so clear on how far the age range goes because now you have these some, a trend we've been seeing is they're putting accessories with figures trying to gear them more towards the younger kids not realizing that in some ways you're alienating the older fans like like I said that's that's fine gear the stuff towards the young kids. That's, so some of the accessories get geared that way, and I don't have a problem with that. But I just think they're unnecessary. Uh, you know, we've seen this trend of, like, all these, like, big, giant, you know, rocket launchers and, like, launching discs and this and that. And just kind of gimmicky things, and they don't... They don't look very well, and they don't look good in the figure's hands. Sometimes they do, but in most cases they don't. So they don't, they don't look good. Us as collectors, 
we definitely don't have any use for them. You know, they get put in the bag or put in like an extra part bin somewhere to, I don't know, used in a display or something. I don't know. But we don't have much of a use for them. And I just, I wonder, do the younger kids, do they even like those, you know, big, ugly accessories, you know, the big honking accessories? And, uh, if some of you who do have uh, younger kids that are into Star Wars, you know, maybe you could, you know, let me know. Do the do the kids even like those accessories? I know we don't. The older fans are just like, eh, okay, it's there. It's something extra for our money, which uh, the, the price of figures now in America, now we shouldn't be complaining too much. I mean, we we complain uh, we're paying eight ninety nine, nine ninety nine. Uh, roughly in the ten dollar range for a figure, you know, so many of our fellow YouTubers overseas, they're they're paying fifteen, sixteen bucks or more, somewhere in there. So that's a lot of money. So we, we really have it fairly good over here in America as far as prices. They gotta, they have a lot more. So so extra accessories can be welcome sometimes. You know, we we just the accessories they're putting in just fall short and we don't you know uh another thing which again i don't think i think it's geared more towards kids but i don't think even they play it and that's that galactic battle game uh, i don't know if anyone who actually plays that game and i think as collectors we're kind of getting tired of it it's just like enough you know there's so many other things that hasbro could do and that we'd rather see instead i've heard many suggestions like i remember the in the Power of the Force days, he had these sort of like freeze frame figures, and they came with like these sort of almost like a little film cell. You can hold it to the light, and you had a still, and it was and it was neat to look at. It was something you know, sort of useful. Uh, then one of the best things they ever did was the, the whole Build a Droid series. You know, you you bought I think five or six figures, and you had an extra part, and you could make a whole other figure, and that's something that's it was actually be useful where it's an astromech droid or protocol droid or something like that i think that was kind of cool something like that again would would be a nice change uh you know the the galactic balcony the, the, the game cards like yeah they're okay you know we all have about six thousand of those game dies we're sick of those uh figure stands figure stands i like you know that's always a good accessory despite the color or whatever uh, to me, that's a, that should always be a welcome accessory. Um, I just want to make sure I'm getting. That. Now, another thing is, you know, you have, you know, articulation. Now, with the vintage collection, they're, they're pretty much spot on. We're getting ball jointed, this, that, no problem. But you can go into the movie heroes and the Clone Wars. They're like, it's like they're. I don't know. I guess it's cutting costs or whatever. But it's like, some figures get like, like everything. They get. You know the articulated ankles and and ball jointed hips and all that stuff and all the th stuff that makes for a, helps really make for a great figure. Uh, now again, you know younger fan, you know it's a kid that's seven, eight, nine. Maybe he's not caring. He probably doesn't care that there's no ankle articulation. He's probably not. Daddy, I don't like this figure. It's got no ankle articulation. I don't know. Um, but with us, it's just so weird how they, they'll do it with some figures, but they don't do it in other figures. Like, why can you give this figure great articulation, but then this other figure, not great articulation, you know? You know, like fig figures like the Savage Press, which had no, no ankle articulation, which would have made it such a great, it's an amazing, awesome figure to begin with. But that one thing kind of like, ah, like, I don't know, it's just weird. Um, I'm just, I just didn't want to... Oh, also, and then you have the repacks. And so many repacks. And repacks can be good to a, a certain extent. They can, you know, they can be good to a certain extent. You know, you miss out on a figure. It's nice to see uh, figures re-release, even if it is in a battle pack. Uh, but in some cases, like, like there's one pack I saw where it's like, it's Han Solo and Chewbacca and C-3PO. It's like, we don't need repacks of figures like that. Those main core figures, you know, we have, or most likely we have. And 
as great as Darth Vader is, how many Darth Vader figures do we need? How many R two D two figures we do do we need? You know, love R two, but there have been so many over the years. Uh, you know, again, it'd be nice to see some repacks of some of the harder figures that, you know, the the season three Ahsoka, the Gamorrean Guard, stuff like that. I think some of those are coming. I'm not sure. But some of those really hard, the the Echo Base Trooper, the Bastilla Shan, we those are like impossible to find, and the prices skyrocket. You know, those are the kinds of figures we need, and you know, uh, some different figures. You know, you, like you look at the Clone Wars, and Daniel East brought this up. You buy clones and clones and clones and Jedi, and what are you gonna have like, like a, a Count Dooku or General Grievous, and then. 30 battle droids, which gets kind of boring. I don't know. You know, we need some more variety in the in the characters, uh, which would be nice. Uh, another main point that this is one of my biggest problems is the distribution. And again, Daniel Lee's talked about this. You know, some figures are really easy to find in certain areas, whereas you go to a whole different end of the country and it's impossible to find. Uh, you know, and it's like you get waves are coming out. It seems faster and faster than normal. And like we have this, the, the, the Blu-ray deleted scene figures, which some people found no problem even earlier than when they were supposed to come out. But some of us are still searching for those figures. And now we, we have another wave that's, I think is due to come out. It's like, why are these, why are they coming out so quickly? They don't need to come out so quickly. You know, the Blu-ray figures came out. You know, it wasn't that long after the episode one stuff. That was like February. Right? It was like early February when those came out and we're into the this next wave already. It's just people can't catch up. And then another thing that bothers me, I've talked about this, about how you have the exclusive figures. And I think it's too much. This one's exclusive to Toys R Us, that one's exclusive to Walmart. This one's to Target. And then if t you go to a Target or a Walmart or whatever, and they're out of those figures, you can't find them. You have to wait for maybe they get them back in stock or try and find them someplace else. You try and find them on eBay or an Entertainment Earth or Brian's Toys or something like that or some other online retailer. And then you get to pay even more. You know, a figure that's, say, 10 bucks, say, you know, here or whatever it is say, in your area, might be double that at another place because... Well, it's not like you can get this figure, you know, in six, seven different retailers. No, you can only get it at Walmart or, you know, Target or what have you. Um, and that just bothered me. Like, me, personally, I don't have a Toys R Us that's really close to me. As, you know, there's plenty of Toys R Us, I'm sorry, but for me, there isn't one close. I don't have a Walmart near me at all. I have no idea whether there's a Walmart near me. Certainly not one that's close enough for me to get to on a regular basis, you know. So it leaves us kind of stuck, and I just, you know, we're if we really want to figure, we're we're almost forced to pay like, you know, crazy prices for these figures. You know, you go on, like I said, you go on eBay and you look at, uh, you look at what some of these figures go for. The still a Shans and the Gamorrean guards are still going crazy prices. I can't find one at a decent price. I don't want to pay $40 for one figure that I just want to open up. I just want the figure. Even loose, I can't find a decent price. So that's um, what I think Hasbro could really use some points. Get rid of the clunky accessories. Put some useful stuff in there. You know. Um, enough with the the exclusive this and exclusive that. I mean, it's I know it's big money. And so that may not end anytime soon. And then... Our articulation. Give us our articulation. Put it on all the figures. How? Why can't you put it with all the figures? So I don't know. Um, so I hope you know this. Hope I raised some decent points. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I think I tr I went over everything I could think of that I wanted to go in response to this. Hopefully you you enjoyed it. And again, uh, check out the other two videos. I'm gonna put links to Daniel East and Supreme's videos uh, at the bottom in just the description of this video. So, uh, yeah, as usual, hope you enjoyed this video, and until my next, uh, may the force be with you.
Talk.